YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I try to start my own tech company. Sorry I haven't made a video in a couple weeks. I've been pretty busy with a full-time job and just life in general. A few weeks ago, I took a trip to Seattle and if you watched the last video, I actually filmed that like right before I left, the day before, and my background was really dark because I was filming it at like 8 p.m. But I had a really great time in Seattle, just visiting friends and exploring the city. And while I was there, I tried to get a little bit of work done. And I want to share the progress that I made on the app while I was there. And I'll do that in a minute. Uh, since then, um, I got back and was just very busy with work. And then this past weekend was my birthday, actually. So I've just taken some time off from coding and enjoyed spending it with friends and traveling. Um, but I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. And thanks for watching and following along. If you've been watching the past couple videos, there's a couple people who have left some nice comments. And uh, I really appreciate it. So thanks for following along. But um, if you take a look at my screen here, this is a React component named Hero Sprite. My goal for this update or what I was working on in Seattle was I feel like I've gotten the game part of my application to a pretty good stopping point, or at least it's a functioning game. There's a beginning, middle, and end. There's some reward component where you're picking up coins. There's enemies that try to attack you. It's not perfect or even probably great or good, but it is functional at a basic level. And I wanted to turn back to the Pomodoro part of my application and try to connect the two disseparate, or maybe just separate parts of my application and make them a little bit more unified. And the way that I'm doing that is that I wanted to have the character from the game on the screen during the Pomodoro timer, and I wanted him to have some sort of animation. This was a little tricky because the sprite itself exists inside of the phaser 3 game engine and i didn't have access to the game engine on the dashboard screen where the pomodoro timer is so uh, instead i looked into animating it the sprite with css but ultimately decided on using a javascript library which is just a react component because it was easier to set up and because my CSS setup for this project right now is Tailwind, I believe, which I'm really not familiar with at all. And I'm planning in a future update to transition away from Tailwind and probably use React Native for the web. But until then, I didn't really want to dive into writing custom CSS. And this library got me up and running quickly. So if you're working on your own startup or personal side project, I would say use JavaScript libraries whenever you can, if you can take a shortcut to just getting the product launched sooner. Anyway, um, here's my component for the sprite that will sit on the, the home screen. It has uh, a couple props, uh, a width, a height, a scale, a should animate Boolean prop, a direction, frame count, and FPS. The package I'm using is the React Sprite Animator package. I looked into a couple different packages and this is just the one that worked best for me. Um, the height of my character is always 32. The width is 16 in the running animations, but it's 32 in the sword swinging animations. Um, so I just went with 16 for now and I'm using a temporary animation. It's not perfect. I think ideally the character will be lifting weights or chopping wood or something that's more analogous to work that maybe a user is doing while they are running the Pomodoro timer. The should animate Boolean is um, set to active. That's just coming off of props. And then the sprite itself, um, tiles character. I might change this based off of, I, I can reuse this component um, and just change the animation by changing what endpoint, uh, what file we're accessing here. Um, anyway, it's pretty straightforward. Hopefully that makes sense. It takes in width, height, and this frame count is the number of steps it will make in that you know, progress before it repeats and goes back to the original width. And it looks at this direction, horizontal or vertical, to determine based on the width or the height, how much to move the, the viewport in this CSS 
I guess, box for this image. Hopefully that makes sense. A little bit of a weird explanation, but basically what is happening is that we're looking at this image and the CSS in this component from this library creates a little square over your sprite sheet and we'll step it repeatedly. So the width here is 32 pixels and we're animating in a horizontal direction four times. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four frames to our animation and an FPS of eight. And this should animate Boolean should be hooked up to whether or not the timer itself in my Pomodoro application is running. So if I pop back over to this app, I guess, um, you can see here I have my development mode, so the timer is much shorter. And when I press the start button, my character is gonna animate and do a little walk uh, while the Pomodoro timer ticks down. And you can see that when the timer finishes, he stops walking. Um, again, this is sort of just a like a temporary solution. It's not perfect. It's not the animation that I really want this character to be doing, but I have to change the art anyway before I launch. And uh, I just want to have a proof of concept that this is how I'm going to do the animation. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, sorry for the, the small update. Hopefully there's a little bit more uh, meteor progress in the next video, but I really appreciate everyone following along. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.